Welcome to a chess lecture where you're going to learn 10 most important concepts in king and pawn 9 games. The first concept that you need to understand is the power of connected pass pawns. Black's king can never take the pawn at the back because the front pawn will run away from the king to the promotion. This position is winning for white if they just bring their king and then push everything together to promotion. For example, king to f3, king to c5, king to e4, and black is never able to take the pawn on c4 because we will just push b6, make a new queen, and checkmate black. So white's purpose is just to bring the king, and then when it's close enough, they will use the king and pawns together in order to promote and win the game. The second concept is rook's pawn draw. If opponent's king can reach the corner square, it's always a draw in such endgames because it's impossible to lure out the black's king from that corner. For example, a7 check, king a8, and after king to a6, we have a stalemate that has no legal moves, but they're not in the check, and so it is a draw. The third concept is outside pass pawn, which very often decides the outcome in king and pawn nine games. The idea is that white will use such a pawn as a decoy to deflect the black's king away from the rest of their pawns, and they will be eaten by the white's king. For example, h5, king to f6, h6, king has to reach the pawn or else it's going to promote, and now black's king is just too far away from the rest of the pawns and so white's king can comfortably eat the remaining two pawns of black's and enter a winning position. The third concept is sixth rank rule. If white's king can reach the sixth rank in front of the pawn, in such endgame they always win the game unless the pawn that you have is the rook's pawn. For example, here white can play king to e6, black can play king e8, and after we push the pawn to the 7th rank, it's not a stalemate, black's king still has the square c7, so they have to make that move, and then white's king will protect the promotion square, will make the queen, and white is entering a winning position. The fifth concept is all position, which is the most important concept in king and pawn nine games. The idea is that when the kings are opposing each other with a square in between them, no one wants to move their king as it will allow opponent's king to make progress. For example, if it's black to play now, wherever they go, white's king will be able to invade their position and win one of the pawns. For example, if they go to the left, white can go king to e5 and black is losing the game because white will promote first. Opposition can also be used to make a draw. For example, if we have a position that looks like this and it is black to play, black can actually make the draw by keeping the opposition. Here, black must play the move king to d8 because after this move, white is unable to oppose the black's king with black to move. And whenever white moves forward, for example, king to e6, black would be able to play king to e8 and keep the position with white to move. Now black can make a draw. For example, d7, king d8, and after king d6, which is the only move that keeps the pawn protected, we have a stalemate and a draw. In this position, it is white to play. White must play king to d5 in order to win the opposition, have an opposition with black to play, and then they can win the game. For example, king to e7, king to c6, and now we can apply the sixth rank rule to evaluate that it's winning for white. Kings of white is in front of the pawn on the sixth rank, and it's not a rook's pawn, therefore it's always a victory. For example, king to d8, d5, d6, d7, and it's not a stalemate because black's king can go to e7, after which we can go king c7 and promote 
the pawn. The concept of outflanking is similar to opposition. We will go around in such a way that we will be able to win the black's pawn on b6. White starts the outflanking maneuvering by playing king to e6. Now black goes king to b7. King to d7, we're getting closer to the pawn. King a7, king c7. And we have a sideways opposition. It's very unfortunate that it's black to move, but we have what we have. Black needs to move away. After which white wins the pawn, and we can once again apply the six trank rule. Our king is in front of the pawn on the sixth rank and it's not a rook's pawn therefore it's always a win for example here is one of the lines that could happen b7 king of blacks has a square and after king a7 we're going to promote the pawn the concept of shouldering is the idea of not allowing opponent's king to reach the square they want which is the corner in this case to make a draw a big mistake would be just to start pushing the pawn because then black's king is allowed to reach the corner and we would have a stalemate and a draw another way how black can make a draw is if white tries to prevent now black's king of reaching the corner by stepping to the side themselves however in this position it's still a draw as white's king cannot find a way to move out for example white plays h6 Black goes king f8, and the only way to move out is once again allowing black's king to reach the corner, after which it will be a draw. So the right move here for white is king to g7, and we call this shouldering. See these yellow arrows? These are the squares to which black's king cannot go, and so black's king will not be able to reach the corner h8 square. The last concept revolves around idea of creating a pass pawn by giving one or more pawns of our own as a sacrifice. In this position, white can ingeniously win the game by creating a pass pawn at the cost of the sacrifice. Everything starts with the move b6. It doesn't matter how black takes, we'll just use exactly the same approach, just with a different pawn. For example, c takes b6, then we sacrifice the a pawn by playing a6 and here we're creating the threat of taking and promoting so black must accept and now we play c6 and black's king is too far away white is winning the game by queening after which we will have enough time to eat the rest of the black pawns. If you enjoyed today's video, considering hiring me as your personal online chess coach, my contacts are on the right. I would appreciate if you put a like on this video or leave a comment. Thank you and see you in the next video.